the microphone is on. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Brad. I grew up um, in Asheboro, North Carolina, and I went to this church my entire life. My entire life. And if you think about time and life, and oh my God, I'm 18 years old. I turned 19 in July 21st. 18 years of my life is nothing of God's life. Because my dad told me that one day on earth is a thousand years in, in, in heaven or in God's eyes. And if you think about that, if you think about like Interstellar or like that movie, you know, time is crazy. And, and Interstellar is crazy, but... But, but time on this earth is nothing. He put us on a little earth and he revolved it. But he's got bigger things for us that we have no clue about. And <laughs> no clue. So we're talking about defining moments, right? And God um, has given me a few defining moments. I'm sure all of y'all have had some defining moments. Everyone has defining moments. But if it's what you do with your defining moments is, is what, it, what matters. Um, so I grew up going to this church, and I went to this youth group when I was <laughs> legally, or my age was old enough to let me go to this youth group, and um, Joe Soria was the pastor, and I grew up with his son, his name was Ethan Soria, and me and Ethan played football together, and I bonded with him, and then he, and then, and then he moved away, and their family moved away, but that's, that's not the point. The point is that I'm, I went to this youth group, and I, and I was, grew up in it, and I went to the for a certain amount of time, and then eventually I had to go away. But I, I started to not come um, about, I don't even remember when it really was, but I started to stop coming. And, it, and you come to a youth group because maybe why, what brings us together, people, your friends come, right? You go to a youth group because your friends go. And I went my whole life. And then I stopped because a few of my friends stopped. And we got into other things in our life that we were doing. And, and if you think about the essence of it, though, why do you have to go to church? You know, you say you got to go to church, man. You got church clothes. Lecrae made an album, a one, two, three albums called Church Clothes. And he just dropped Church Clothes 3 on, in, in January. And y'all look up here, man. I am wearing some church clothes. I, I mean, look. Look at my outfit. I go to school in California. It's a little bit different. But regardless of what you wear, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Inside or out, it doesn't matter. Because I'm a businessman. I got ideas, and I'm going to ramble, but I'm going to try and stay on track like a preacher would. But defining moments, all right? Oh, let me go back to it. And I wrote it down in my notes. And if you have a note, everyone has an iPhone. If you got an iPhone, hold it up in the air. You got a thing called notes, and you got to use them because when you have a defining moment, I wrote it five seconds ago. Defining moment, question mark. What is it? Brad answered that for me. When it happens to you, write it down. Because later on in life, you can reflect on your life, and you can write it down, and it'll stay with you. But I'm going to explain my defining moment from when it started to where it can go. Um, like you said, and I wrote that down before Brad even said it. But like God, like like Brad said, this was a God thing because I wasn't planning on going to church tonight. I play on a soccer team in Greensboro, and I had practice, right? But if you look about how long ago was it? I pulled my hamstring playing golf with Josh Lamison. I pulled my hamstring playing golf, guys. I, I literally flipped a, a golf cart. This is how God works. You, this is exactly where it started. And you laugh because it's funny, and, I'm, and I want you to laugh. But that is the exact moment where God really started my defining moment. Now, I live life, and he's used and got inside my head since I was little because my parents raised me the right way. And, God, and my mom just told me before I left to go to church that it is important to raise your kids the right way because that's the only way. And if you raise them the right way, that they can never stray away from the path that they're supposed to live. And... I flipped a golf cart out in, whatever was it, Tot Hill Farm, and, oh man, it was crazy. It, it hit me, and I was laying there for a while. I was in pain, baby, and Josh Lamison, a big guy, he, he, he was like, I was kind of, I was in there, but he was a nice guy. He picked the golf cart up and threw it back like it should be for me, and I'm in pain. My body got hurt. It's all right, but I'm moving around, and I'm, I literally laid in that fairway, that grass, for about four minutes we had two other people with us and they were on the green they didn't really they weren't doing much 
But I laid there in pain in my in my hamstring. And Jen, you're a you're a physical therapist, is what they call them. But your hamstrings are engine; they make you go. And if you think about it, your engines, like an old BMW, a '73 blue one. I just saw one. It's old, but it's seven 1973. Think about how old that is. All right. And it's pretty. But but listen. Hey, it's okay to be old. Now listen. It's, in 1973 is a while ago, but this man kept his car. He he started his engine enough times to where if he I asked him, I said, now if you started that thing up, what would happen? And he said, it'll start right away. Because he's continually used his engines. And I pulled a I pulled a hamstring. But that's an engine of mine that makes me go. And we were built to move around and go. And if I keep my engines going, my body going, my whole life, I can go for however long I really want if I do it the right way. Now, the point of all that is, is that God started my defining moment with pulling my, my hamstring, my engine. He stopped my engines. Right? He stopped my engines. And then I go, I play soccer. I play soccer. And... I, uh, we're about to go, and I didn't really want to go to Wilmington with my family, because sometimes family vacations, honestly, they're not that fun. Um, but, um, we're, we have a little, little, my sister goes to school in Wilmington, she's got a little place to stay, and we all drew up, drove up as a family with my little sister and, and her friend Abby and, and, my, and my brother, Indy. And Indy is a kid that is my roommate, that God put us together at, at Point Loma in San Diego, California, and me and him are rooming together, and then he comes back to see where I grew up in this summer. And he's been living with us in Asheboro since May, May, early May. And the point is that we all go up there as a family. And I'm sitting out there, and, and, and God started with pulling my hamstring, and I, I'm hurt. And I'm, 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 I'm moving around, I'm hurt. But the point is that the first night I go to bed in Wilmington, I could not sleep. I couldn't sleep. And it was, I mean, we watched movies. Sometimes I'll stay up till two or three, and that's nothing. I'll go to bed very easily. But it was four o'clock, and I'm laying in the bed, and I said, all right, if it's five o'clock, I'm going to go watch the sunrise. And so five o'clock hit, and I go outside with my little, my, my golden retriever, my dog, my man's best friend. And we go out there alone, and I meditate, and I, and I worship. And, and when I worship, I use, I use Jonathan Helser. Uh, Jonathan, David, Helser, and, and Melissa, and there I grew up because they're from Sophia, North Carolina, and that's right around the corner. But I grew up loving their worship, and I was a young kid. I was like 12 years old. I would go to his concerts that my parents would take me to, and this is where God. He, this is how he works. I'm young. I literally danced around, acting like an idiot, what we would call it. But I'm not an idiot. God had a hold of my heart and my spirit, and He let me dance, and that's how I worshipped. Now I was young, right? But later on in life, I'm 18. It was only, what, six years? Um, 18, I go outside to meditate, and I put on Jonathan's playlist that I have, and I, I just sat there, and, 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 I, and I let the, the Lord, I said, before I even played the song, I said, God, let your presence come down upon me, your presence. Like, let it be here. Just, I invited him in, and that's the point. And he came, <laughs> and he came. But when you believe in spirit, like, we're spirit. We're soul. There is a spiritual world. I believed in spirit and in truth. But I didn't believe at the time. That's the funny thing. But now I know. I can see it. But back in that day, okay, now let me, let me, give, you, let me give you some reality. I grew up a good kid. I mean, I, had, I was a good kid. My sister, my older sister, is, uh, is a good person. She's a good heart. But she did things, the world, and she, she made some bad decisions along the line, and I learned from her, and I tried to go a different way. But the point is, my dad said, he, a wise man once told me, um, he said, Victoria, that's my older sister, she said, he said, you, you know, you don't have to worry about her, because she'll tell you what she's doing, or she's doing, she'll tell you. But Matt's the one you got to worry about. And I was like, huh. And he said, you know, I thought about that too, but if you think about it, you grew up a good man, you know, it was, it was easy for you. And you look good, son, you know, you're, you're smart. But Matt is the one you got to worry about because if the devil ever gets a hold of him, he'll go into the worldly ways and the sinful nature that we, have, we live in. And I went down the worldly sinful nature, guys. I did. I'll tell you the truth. I mean, I've drank alcohol. I've done it all. It's legal. It's illegal, yeah. But in, in Europe, is it illegal? I can debate you on, is it 18 illegal? Well, that's not the point. The point is, is that I've lived... And I've, 
I've done, I've done drugs and I've done things that are not good. They're not, and they say, don't do drugs, kids, you know? But they say it for a reason, and if you think about it, what is, what is good and bad? If it is not good in, it's bad. If you put bad in, you're going to get bad out. If you put good in, you get good out. And now my mom told me when I was little, if you put good in, you're going to get good out. And I thought about it, I tried to debate her because I was young and teenager and blah, blah, blah. But good in is good out. Healthy food, good in, good out. You know, work out, good in, you feel good, good out, you look good. Okay, There's, you can go on and on about good in and good out. The point is, you put the good in and you get good out. Now, so I'm sitting there out and, you know, worshiping my God and I invited him. And, and, and it says, and in spirit and truth, if you believe, in, in spirit and truth, if you think it's true, it's, it's more than likely, if it's right, it's true. And it says, if your spirit and truth believes it, that when you worship, angels come and they worship with you. And there are, I said there's a spiritual world. Now, there literally is a spiritual world. And it's about angels and demons. You think about them. They battle. They literally, if I prayed that, my mom prays that a hedge of protection of angels surrounds our house and protects it, right? That's true because they will, they will dance. They'll do whatever. But the angels chill around our house and they protect it. And we, don't, we haven't had no robberies, have we, Lizza? No, we haven't. Not really anything that's harmed us. But that's not the point. If you... If, if you Protect yourself. Angels, angels came and sat down with me in, the, in, in Wilmington, and I meditated out there, and I listened to Jonathan Helser's songs. And God got a hold of my heart. And I'm an emotional guy, and I started crying. And I'm 18 and in a minute, it's okay to cry. It's okay to cry. But I'm sitting there, and I'm crying. And if you, what music do you listen to other than the good stuff that gives you chills? You give me one genre that gives you chills other than like something that is pleasing to God. And it gives you chills. And I'm thinking about that because I listen to bad music in my worldly nature. But God's music will chill your body out. And then you're like, oh my God, all right. And it's like, it's real. It's real. But. The point of all this, and I'm taking a while to, to, to describe you my defining moment, but, but hear me out. God's, God's presence came into my, my life right then, truly and definingly. And I don't know if that's a word, but he defined my moment by starting me that night. I could not sleep, and I worshiped, and I prayed. But there was one song in particular that's, that was called Abba. And, and what does Abba mean? Does anybody know? Father. father. The Father. Abba means Father. And it's Aramic, or Aramic, however you say that. Ar Aramic for Daddy. Because in that other language, and languages, are, they don't mean anything. They mean that we're all one. That language, Aramic, he, he, little kids said, Abba, Abba. It's like Daddy, Daddy, you know? And Daddy. And that, that song, I'm going to play it for you at the end of this. But I listened to it three times because it meant so much to me. Calling my father, who my physical father is, is Byron Owens. But my ultimate father is Abba. And I will tell you something about the word Abba because I've researched it and I know it. But Abba is special because you cannot call Abba father, Abba, unless you are a born-again believer. You can't say Abba. You can't call God Abba unless you're a born-again believer, Right? So I, I want to be a born-again believer, and I'm going to get baptized before I leave to go back to California because I believe it. And Jonathan, who wrote the song, is going to baptize me. I'm, I, that's the only person that's going to baptize me. If God's will, God's going to show me who's going to baptize me. But anyways, I want to get baptized because I want to be a born-again believer. And he said that you cannot call me Father Abba unless you are a born-again believer. Now listen, you can say it if you want, but the truth is, if you say, Abba, and I'm a born-again believer, then I know that I can sin, and it's okay, because it's different to call him, it's different to sin when you're a born-again believer versus when you're not. Because when you're a born-again believer, he says, oh, it's okay to sin, it's, it's sinful nature, you have to sin. But when you know that you're sinning, and when you, when you live it, it says, it says, when you are content with that sin, 
it's not okay. If you're comfortable in your sin, like an alcoholic, think about an alcoholic. They literally drink so much and they sit around because that's what alcohol does to you. But they drink so much of it and they're content with it. They're uncomfortable with it. People are okay living in this world. They're, it's a worldly, sinful world. And people are okay with it. They got plenty of money. It's okay. But they ain't got no, they ain't got the true, what they really need. And I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you this because I'm a, I'm a born again believer and I'm going to sin and it's okay. But the point is that Abba, my father, I can call him that, right? So the song called Abba by Jonathan is insane. But anyways, here's my story. This is my defining moment, people. I'm 18 years old. It's nothing in God's snap of a finger. But he brought my life in 18 years to finally realize and see what I'm here for. What I'm finally here for. And if you say, what's your why? Like you think about anything, you say why? You ask questions. It's good to ask questions. Ask questions in school. Ask questions wherever you are because you, you learn from it. And that's what asking questions does. It, you learn it. And you do. You ask enough questions until you learn it. That's what education and learning is. Quit asking questions and figuring it out in your head. So I started after when God got a hold of me, I started learning things and absorbing things. But I done rambled enough to forget what I was talking about. But um, So... Let me take a sip of water. And this is a joke that I brought up here on purpose because I went and stole it from your fridge, by the way, but I'll pay you back. Um, they say, <laughs> let me do this real quick. Hold on. It's called, uh, what does this say? The Sony? That's the company that made this water bottle. But it's pure inside there. It's water, right? You, get, you drink the water because it's pure. Does it make you feel better, yes or no? Yeah, it's water, right? But what does that mean? Why? Wow. It hydrates you, and it keeps your body going. And I got an engine, and I got to keep it going. So, you want to have you an Adam's Ale? And I'll toss it to you, but I, an Adam's Ale is a joke, but Adam and Eve and their ale, like we created to be like beer and ale, it's an Adam's Ale. <laughs> and that's like an idea that God gave me or like a thought that he gave me. And it's funny because Adam's ale, beer, it's water, it's a joke. But I'm going to take a sip of it now. And no one laughs. You'll laugh when you do. Adam's beer, right? It's good stuff. It makes you feel great. Drink it all the time. Okay, but anyways, I'm out in Wilmington. And um, I get a, God gets a hold of me, and he says, Abba. And, and what I'm going to do, because a lot of the world, let me talk to you about tattoos. They go, and, and, and if a word means something to them, they go tattoo it on their body. And if it doesn't mean anything to them, they may tattoo it on their body. But think about what you do when you tattoo it on your body. You put it on your body, and it stays with you for your life, right? Your whole life. They say, don't do a tattoo, because you'll regret it. You'll regret it. But... At my point, and if I sound like if I put Abba right there on my wrist, that's where I'm going to put it. Abba. If I put that in skin, on my bones and my skin, would I regret it? I don't think I will. Because that's a constant reminder of why I'm living. Because I'll tell you, what's my why? My why is to glorify my father, Abba. And I'm doing a lot of preaching right now, but... Let me get to the point, and anyways, I got about five minutes. So I, I, I go the next night, and I live my, and I told my parents about everything that happened, and um, the next night, I couldn't sleep again, and the same thing basically happened, um, but I, I got a hold, God got a hold of me, and then the next night, I really couldn't sleep that much at all again. The amount of hours that I've slept in the past three days, uh, in those three days, in those four days, it was insane. I slept hardly any hours. But my body was able to go, and I fueled it. And I ate, and I did whatever. But my defining moment is Abba. It's Father. It's why I live. It's why we live. Okay? Because that is why I'm living, to glorify my Father and to make everything bad good. 
turn it bad. If it's bad, make it good and give it to him. Because everything I do in my life, I'm going to give it to my father. So if I could play this song, Abba, we're just going to sit here and we're going to like watch this video and just listen to what I experienced. Because that's, this is my defining moment. And I'm going to put it on my, on my ink. And it says in the song, if I can say one more thing, that it's like, you're more real than the skin on my bones. And he's talking about God. He says, more, you're God, you're more real than the skin on my bones. And if that's not funny to put a tattoo after this happened to me, um, it's a joke. But this song has changed my life. And this word has changed my life. So that's my defining moment, my defining moment. But we'll just, let's just listen to this and watch Johnny as he uh, changes lives and sings his beautiful voice. Thank you all.